Good morning. This is Ernest Lamont, the program director for the Concerned Christian Men. And today we have Dr. Michael McGee. Thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you. Okay. Well, first off, can you talk a little bit about um, where you grew up and a little bit about your career? Uh, yeah, so um, I grew up uh, on the on the far, far south side of Chicago, which is actually Gary, Indiana. So it's it's super south. Yeah. Um, for those of you who don't know, Gary, Indiana is a small little city, um, maybe about 25, 30 minutes from Chicago. Um, I grew up in a single parent family. It was just my mom and I. Um, I grew up in a, every project in Gary. Um, back at that time, I used to get into trouble um, being a, a, you know, a young boy whose dad wasn't wasn't in the house. I, my dad uh, was in my life, but he wasn't in the house. Um, and also I used to get into fights all the time. And, you know, I, um, you know, learned how to fight, got into a lot of trouble, um, but I still did well in classes. Um, my mom made sure that she was going to school to be a nurse uh, while, while growing up uh, with me uh, and really pushed me to do well. But the schools I went to, uh, I tend to try to like to fit in a lot and and, and didn't like to really show my intelligence. So I would really suppress my intelligence even while in, in, in junior high school and high school, uh, just so I can fit in. Uh, and I, I got into trouble. And so, um, you know, that's one of the reasons why violence prevention is something that I really um, like to, to try, to, try to, to, to have as a mission now for me, because back then you can fight all day long, uh, two and three days at a time and not get shot. Nowadays, uh, young men uh, will come back at you with a gun uh, and they'll shoot you. Uh, no one has uh, any any uh, concern for life now. And so I, I, I encourage young men uh, to, to resolve conflict and try not to get into a fight. I actually took martial arts and used to box. So I was really good at it. Um, and it's just something that I learned to have discipline, which was not to get into situations. That's what martial arts teach you. But there are times when I had to defend myself. But again, like right now in this day and age, that's something you don't want to do. And so um, I, I, my mom did push me to uh, do well in school. I actually ended up going to Purdue University, um, which was in West Lafayette, Indiana, as you can see. Um, and I didn't know what I wanted to go into. At that time, I went into engineering uh, and I hated it. And then I decided, OK, you know what? My mom's a nurse. I've been around the hospital, even though I didn't know any doctors. I said, let me, let, me, let me change my major and go into something that I think I'd be good at, which was trying to become a doctor. And uh, when I first um, tried, I, I got a lot of disappointment. Um, my counselor told me that black men don't really get into medical school. And it was a little um, dis, you know, um, concerning that someone would tell me that. Um, but in reality, and now that I am here today, there are not a lot of black male doctors. Uh, and so we have to you know, fight extra hard to achieve to get to um, that level of, 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 um, of, of a career. And so I encourage you guys, if someone tells you you can't do anything, that you really you know, dig deep, you know, persevere, don't give up, say your prayers and you know, keep striving because there are a lot of people who are gonna try to um, you know, prevent you from getting to your goals in life. And so never let that deter you. Uh, eventually I ended up finishing up um, at Purdue and I ended up going into graduate school. I went to graduate school at University of Illinois um, and I got a master's in public health and I left there and then I went to Rush College, um, which as you know, is right downtown Chicago. Uh, and I left there and I, I went to NYU uh, where I went uh, to become uh, a physician. That's where I did my internship and residency. And so that's kind of like my, my collegiate career and me becoming a doctor. And I became an ER doc. Um, ER docs, um, I like the excitement. I like being able to take care of any and everything that comes into the ER department. Um, and it was something that um, I trained well at, at going to NYU. I was one of only uh, 40 residents. I was the only black male that graduated. Uh, so it's been a struggle. Um, and, and like I said, again, that counselor who told me black men uh, really can't get into medical school is right. because. You know, I had plenty of, of colleagues who didn't finish, uh, who um, dropped out or, and, and there was only just me graduating. So um, it's gonna be a challenge for some of you uh, in the career you choose, but again, perseverance, prayer, uh, and, and just staying with it and hard work uh, will, 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 you know, allow you to achieve what you wanna achieve in life. 
No, that's very true. I know you're part of a group that opened up the first black owned urgent care in Chicago. Talk a little bit about how that became about and why do you think that's so important? So, yeah, so um, once I finished up from my training, I, um, I started working back in my hometown in Gary, Indiana. And this was after my mother, who was a nurse, um, was diagnosed with terminal ill uterine cancer uh, in 2004. And so I, I, I took a job here to be with her while she went through her chemo training, I mean, through her chemo and treatments. And within three months, she died. And so I decided to stay here as, as opposed to staying at my job in Atlanta. I had started working in Atlanta. And um, my grandmother uh, was staying with my mom at that time. She was 94. So I moved back uh, to Gary to take care of my mom. And when I moved back within the first year, I uh, became the associate medical director. And at that time, I was in my ER one day and um, I saw a young man who had gotten shot while playing football uh, at his school in Gary. And at that time I decided, I took care of him, he lived. At that time I decided to start a profit, a nonprofit organization to prevent violence for young men and young women. It was called POP, which means Project Outreach Prevention on Youth Violence. And so while doing that, I, I continued to go out and talk to the community and kids about violence, but I also um, had my own ER group. And so I became the boss. I started my own um, um, ER um, business and I did the hiring and firing. And so up until 2018, um, I was the boss, the CEO and president of the group. And at that time, one of my colleagues who was an orthopedic surgeon uh, who uh, played for the Chicago Bears, uh, his name was Greg Primus, came to me with an idea to open up an urgent care uh, on the south side of Chicago uh, on 47th Street. And from me knowing how a lot of people will go to the ER because I was an ER doc. You have a little bit of injury. Uh, you may have asthma attack, which is mild. And you will go sit in the ER for several hours. And then once you get seen, you get treated and you get released. And then you have this high expensive bill. And so I decided to open up an urgent care, which is kind of like an ER where we have an x-ray labs and we can see you for your, you know, your main issues that you come in for and we can get you out within like an hour and your bill will be much cheaper so you can afford it. So I wanted something where on the south side of Chicago, we could have affordable care and still be able to get an x-ray if you twisted your ankle. Um, if you had, um, if you needed blood work done, um, you can come in and we can do blood work. So our urgent care is like a small little ER that takes care of none emergency. So if you're having a heart attack, you've been shot, if you've um, been in a bad car accident or having a stroke, you can't come. But if you have a fever, a cold, a cough, if you have um, you know, any kind of you know, uh, problems with your, with, your, with your bladder or a urinary tract infection, you can come to us and we can take care of that. And so our urgent care is the, the first all black owned, all my other partners, all, you know, two of them are black as well. One is a trauma surgeon and one is an ER doc like myself. And we open up this facility to try to take care of black and brown people on the south side of Chicago. And that's what we're doing today. It's called Premier Health Network. And you will hear about that from the video that we're gonna show you as well. And we're entering now two full years that we had to deal with COVID. Can you talk a little bit about just an update on what people should know about COVID and why you believe that vaccination is important? Yeah, so right about now, everybody knows about coronavirus. COVID-19. It's been here since March of 2020. And we all know somebody who's gotten really sick. We know somebody who, who may be a friend who may have died from it. We may have a relative who may have died. And we also know that COVID, when it first came, it affected Black and Brown people the most. Black people have a lot of medical problems. We have lung problems like asthma. We have diabetes. We have high blood pressure. We may have kidney problems. We may have um, you know, obesity or be overweight. And guess what? Youth do too. Some youth may have you know, a cancer. Some, some, some adults may have a cancer. And those people we found out early on, they were at high risk for getting COVID. And they would go to the hospital and they would die. And so what we found was that before we got the vaccinations, people were dying everywhere. And, and because people, we didn't have a treatment, 
the COVID would mutate in your body and change. So it would become a different product called a variant. And so we had the alpha, we had the beta, we had the gamma, we had the delta, which is what we just had that came from India, where in, in, in October 2020, we had a lot of people who were dying. Um, we thought it was over. And then we started back having it. And then now here we are in the end of November, we heard about Omicron being in Africa and we heard it was 1% of the population, but within three weeks, it took up 73%. So that means if you're in a room with hundred students like yourself, 73 of them would have Omicron. And that's what we found out. And then within a week later, 94% of the whole nation would have Omicron. And it was a dominant species, the dominant variant that was taking over everything. And so what we found is that Omicron, even though it's not as severe as Delta and all the other different variants, it's affecting a whole bunch of more people. And we're also finding out that the vaccinations, if you get your two shots of Pfizer, and now if you get a booster, it protects you so that you won't have to go to the hospital. You don't have to get really sick and be in an intensive care unit. You don't have to be put on a ventilator where they put a tube into your lungs to help you breathe. Because if you're vaccinated, there are not a lot of people who still go to the hospital now. They typically get some, you know, some cold symptoms. They cough a little bit, may have a fever, body aches, you know, night sweats, back pain, and they do well. But people who have not gotten a vaccination, we now know from all the data from the past two years that people who are vaccinated, they tend to do well. And before Omicron, we saw that people who were vaccinated didn't even really get the, the virus. But because Omicron has mutated at least 39 times, it can get around the vaccines. And so you still can get infected, but the reality is you don't get super sick and you don't die from it. And so it's, we're encouraging everybody, all youth, you know, from kids five and up can get the vaccination and do well. And, and what's, what's strange about it is that with this Omicron, it affects the upper airway, which is your throat, your nose, you get nasal congestion where you're snotty, you get a sore throat or scratchy throat. And you may think it's a simple cold. And because all of that virus is in your upper airway, if you sneeze, cough, spit while you're talking, and you're around somebody within three feet, within 15 minutes, 15 minutes, they can get Omicron. That's why it's important for you guys to wear high upscale masks. Even a cloth mask that you wear with sports on it or you know anything that's cloth that's not you know really... Uh, surgical mask or a KN95, you can end up getting COVID real easily because you're not wearing the proper mask. And so we encourage all of you to wear the proper mask because what happens is you may not get sick, but your grandmother or your little baby sister who's only four years old who can't wear a mask or who can't get vaccinated will get sick. So you got to care about others. Uh, and so we're encouraging everybody, all you, to get the vaccine, tell your parents, you know, that you want to get it done. There's a bunch of stories out there and a bunch of myths about what it do to you. Not pe no one has died from, from getting a vaccine. The worst that can happen is you may get an allergic reaction within the first five, 10 minutes. That's why we watch you for 15 minutes when you get the vaccine. And it doesn't cause a lot of problems. People were saying that it can make you sterile so you can have kids. They say that it can take over your mRNA, which would take over your DNA so that it will control you that the government is, is doing it. There's so many, any, so many untruths and lies out there. And I just can't understand why when we as black people know somebody, a friend or a family member has died. So we know it's not fake. We know it's the real deal because people in our family have died from it. And so I encourage all of you, get the vaccine, tell your parents you want it, and encourage your parents to get the vaccine. And also, um, healthcare is extremely important. Can you talk to these the young boys a little bit about just the importance of regularly going to your physician? Because some people don't necessarily do yearly physical visits. Yeah. So, so, so most um, young men and young women, uh, if they're if they're blessed, they don't often have a bunch of medical problems. But good habits start when you're young. If you're eating the right foods, eating your vegetables, and not eating a bunch of sweets and 
unhealthy foods, you won't gain weight. As you gain weight, you can get diabetes. You know, there are young kids who get high blood pressure. Um, there are a bunch of kids who can get diabetes at an early age. You know, so you got to be aware of that. And even when it comes to as you get older, you know, a part of health is, 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 is um, knowing about the birds and the bees and, and, and abstaining from having sex until you're old enough and mature enough and have one person in your life. Because a lot of times young men, young girls can have sex too early and they can get HIV, AIDS, they can get, you know, herpes or, um, you know, uh, gonorrhea, chlamydia. Uh, and we're finding out that a lot of young people have that right now where they may not be able to have a baby when they're married. So we encourage you to, 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 to abstain from sex. And if you're old enough to have sex, to be with one person and to uh, use protection. Uh, and right now, the biggest public health problem right now uh, is, is with violence. And that's what, um, why I started my profit, my nonprofit organization, is to try to go out and talk to youth about violence. Because the number one killer for young black men aged 10 to 24 is homicide from gunshots. And it's also the number two killer for Hispanic young boys aged 10 to 24 is homicide from gunshots. Everybody who say they're your friend are not your friend. And one of the studies done by the FBI showed that the number one reason for people being shot or killed is not gangs. Gangs is there, like in Chicago and some cities, you do have a lot of gangs, but you have small gangs who are basically beefing because of altercations. They get into Facebook you know, arguments and then somebody starts shooting. Well, the FBI discovered that the number one reason for people being shot it's altercations. And it's usually by somebody that you know. So you got to watch your friends because everybody not your friend. And so right now, a lot of people have guns. Uh, and I encourage any of you who have parents in your family who have guns, tell your parents to lock their gun up. Their guns should not be open and out because, you know, kids can play with them and, you know, inadvertently, you know, shoot another relative or a friend. So be aware that that's a concern. If you see a gun, even if you're at your friend's house and you see their gun, go tell somebody, y'all need to put your guns up. Because right now we want everybody to, to have a nice life and to live to see adulthood and to have your own family and to get a good job. So we encourage you guys to do whatever you can to prevent violence because get into a simple fight right now. As I said before, they don't fight fair now. You know, they don't... Um, you know, put up their fists. If you knock somebody out, they're gonna go back and, and, and hide up behind a car and shoot you. So if you can avoid any fights, any arguments, any altercations that can lead to, you know, people getting injured seriously, I encourage all of you to do that. And what other advice can you give to our young boys a little bit about the fact that how they can become the young leaders of tomorrow? Well, like I said, you know, there are going to be a lot of people um, around you who may discourage you from being all you can be. I have my counselor, but some people have their own family members. Think about times when you're trying to study and your friends who may not like to study will try to encourage you to do something, play games, video games, text, talk on the phone. There time, there's a time and place for everything. I used to say when I was in medical school, you study hard to party hard meaning you get your studying out the way, then you can go play video games and talk on the phones. So find a time, you know, when you can sit down and really focus on studying. Because if you spend one good hour studying hard, that's better than spending three or four hours of studying, looking at TV, playing a video game, playing on your phone, and then you're not even understanding your lesson. And then now you get to your test the next day and you don't even know what you were studying, even though you spent four hours. So cut everything off, you know, focus on what you're doing and study hard. And then once you study it and read it, go back and ask the questions to yourself. Go and do some questions. Make sure you understand what was asked of you so that now when you go to take the test, you know you're really prepared. And so with that, I encourage you guys as you go through life like I did, you got to have those qualities. You got to have hard work because it's not going to all be easy. You got to persevere, meaning when things get tough and get hard, you got to keep going. And then you have to have faith and prayer because there's going to be moments where, like in my life, my mom died. I could have easily said, look, I'm tired of being a doctor. I don't want to do anything pertaining to the medical field, but I persisted. 
There are times when things may happen. You may break up with your girlfriend or your boyfriend or whomever. And you may have somebody who quits you or breaks your heart. Well, does that mean you're going to stop trying to be all you can be? No. That's when you buckle down, you pray harder, and you move forward. Life is going to have its challenges and ups and downs. But as long as you have faith, God, hard work, and perseverance, you can get through it. And last question, what do you like to do in your spare time when you do have spare time? Um, I spend time with my family and my, my twin daughters who are 13. I like to read. Um, I still uh, do some boxing. I have a boxing bag and I, I do some kicks here and there. I still like to do my martial arts, but I love to go to the movies. Uh, and so that's one thing that I've always loved, watching a very good movie or, or reading a very good book. I, I like military type stuff. I almost went to the Marines instead of going to college. Uh, but I like reading books about the military and, you know, um, you know, Navy SEALs and that kind of stuff. So those are some of the things I like to do. Well, Dr. Mickey, thank you very much for taking some of your time today. Okay. So, um, yeah, so you can um, 